unfortunate times. Uh, I could not leave the country. And I must start the lecture uh, stating that we, obviously, we are sad for all people who are dying in, in our area, but we are mourning more than 1,400 uh, people who were innocent civilians who were uh, uh, murdered on October 7th. Uh, we have hostages, uh, we have injured people, we are being bombed. Um, and uh, it's true that it's unbelievable in 2023 that the world is seeing such uh, horrific uh, scenarios. Uh, these are the 30 children that were kidnapped on October 7th, and we are all praying for their safe return. We know some of them. Uh, and, and lastly, this is uh, uh, our staircase of the hospital. Uh, this is a picture taken last week uh, when we are bombed. The nurses are just grasping the premature infants that can go out from the incubator and are waiting at the stair uh, cases until uh, the bombing uh, is over. Um, so I had to share this with you, and now I will move to the lecture on the effect of, of human milk and breastfeeding um, that puts also one of the major uh, nutrients, um, our human milk, uh, in the context of what we heard from Professor Prentice earlier. Reminding all of us, uh, formula milk is just a food, whereas breast milk is a complex living nutritional fluid. It contains so many ingredients and bioactive pe peptides, uh, and many of them have health benefits. Uh, this is uh, a cartoon taken from a lecture of a student in Canada, uh, where he uh, just detailed all ingredients of breast milk, um, and you can see on the right-hand side what can be put into formula. So uh, this is a, a challenge, a technical challenge, uh, and also a biological uh, challenge that at the moment uh, we cannot match what we get from human milk. Um, this is an exhaustive list, but just to show how many bioactive peptides, also cells, uh, and various cells that are important for our immune systems are there in human milk. So the recommendation is that breast milk is the natural food for infants and is the optimal exclusive food for infants up to the age of six months. And when we replace uh, human milk or breast milk, you can see that uh, there are two types. Uh, all of you are aware of the whey proteins and the casein proteins. And it's not only that there is a, ver a reverse from cow's milk to human milk, but also the composition is very different. And the milk itself changes during lactation, between lactations, between women and over time. You can see here uh, uh, just an example from one of our studies looking at women who were breastfeeding for three months versus 14 months. Uh, although there is a significant difference, you can see that uh, uh, actually the concentrations are quite similar over time. So what are the breastfeeding benefits? Uh, and when we are talking about available evidence, we have to remember that we cannot do randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trials, which are the gold standard for human studies. Because first of all, it is unethical to do such studies and avoid uh, children from getting, uh, getting breast milk. Uh, and also uh, the problem is that you cannot really double blind someone who is breastfed versus getting a bottle. In addition, we cannot control for many uh, confounders. Usually women who are breastfeeding have higher socioeconomic class, they are more educated. Usually they don't smoke, they don't drink alcohol, um, and they generally have a better quality of life. Coming back to the previous lecture, that there are many biases uh, that may connect a good outcome that are not really directly connected to breastfeeding. One important effort was done in the Belarus, the PROBIT study, where uh, they, it was a nested controlled study where they took villages um, that they made uh, education about the importance of breastfeeding and also in baby-friendly hospitals. And they were able in those villages to increase 
uh, the breastfeeding rate uh, from 6% to about 43%. And then they had uh, control villages where there was no intervention. So actually, this study, what it showed was the effect uh, of this promotion because it was a mixture at the end of people who were breastfed or not. And when you take these studies and all available evidence, the last meta-analysis was published already seven years ago. Um, and uh, in yellow, you can see where there is a very strong or consistent evidence for reduced mortality due to infectious disease, uh, the uh, significant reduction in diarrhea, in lower respiratory tract infections, and in acute otitis media. In pink, you can see uh, that in 2016, uh, there was a, a suggestive evidence for obesity and for type 2 diabetes. Uh, in yellow at the end, you can see at the bottom, you can see intelligence. This is the last part of my talk, just to show you uh, how complex is trying to find evidence. Uh, but also there are downsides like uh, dental caries, uh, that if you have prolonged breastfeeding, uh, you have increased dental caries when you're uh, breastfeeding for more than 12 months. Although again here, there are other biases that may interfere with the observation of increased caries. There are also uh, effects on women who are breastfeeding. Uh, I will come back to that with the newer uh, meta-analysis done by the American Academy of Pediatrics. Uh, but breast cancer is definitely reduced by breastfeeding. Um, and there is suggestive evidence, at least in 2016, for ovarian and type 2 diabetes. Last year, uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics looks at both at children's outcome uh, and maternal benefits. And as you can see here, there is uh, an effect on childhood and adult obesity. Uh, there is an effect on eczema, uh, on inflammatory bowel diseases, both Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, um, and also on type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, and leukemia. Uh, when you look at paternal outcomes, so there is lower risk of type 2 diabetes, there is lower risk of diabetes mellitus, of gestational diabetes, there is a reduced risk of hypertension for those who are breastfeeding, and uh, also for both premenopausal and postmenopausal breast cancer. So overall, you can see uh, the odds ratio, uh, the reduced reduction of breast cancer if you are uh, breastfe breastfeeding or not. Also for ovarian cancer, for endometrial cancer, and thyroid cancer. However, you must remember that there could be also other observations. This is just published less than a month ago um, in the Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology Journal, showing uh, that being breastfed in infancy, there was an increased risk of colorectal cancer, and especially for adenomas and for getting colon cancer at an age younger than 50 years of age. Uh, and I will come back to that in the end of my lecture because breastfeeding is the optimal feeding for infants, but with an observed effect on uh, healthier aging. However, we should not base our recommendations on health benefits because uh, this uh, evidence may change. So at the moment, the European society that I had the pleasure of being a president until 2019, ESPEGAN, recommends that as long as mutually desired by both mother and child, this is the time for optimal duration. Uh, WHO is talking about up to two years of age or beyond, also the American Academy of Pediatrics. The problem is that there is limited data uh, on benefits beyond six months uh, exclusive breastfeeding, and it's mostly being observed in low socioeconomic status where really this should be encouraged. In Western societies, we should go for about uh, six months um, of breastfeeding. There are those who are also recommending four to six months. Now, what is the prevalence of uh, breastfeeding and uh, uh, where are we regarding our targets? This is coming from our journal, JPGN, a few years ago. This is the data from Europe, uh, extending from 
uh, after birth until 12 months. And you can see that in some countries, uh, they do better, obviously starting of breastfeeding, but when we're talking about four months, six months, or 12 months, we are far away from what we would like to see in exclusive breastfeeding. This was published by WHO uh, in 2022. I would like you to uh, uh, look at the second one from the left. Uh, this is the percentage of babies under six months exclusively breastfed. Uh, and you can see that the target is that worldwide we'll have 70% of exclusive breastfeeding by six months, and currently we have 44% of babies worldwide. I would like uh, to finalize my talk by looking at one uh, of the elements that was always shown as an important uh, factor in breastfeeding and show you, uh, on one hand, uh, the nice scientific uh, findings, how, uh, and on the other hand, how problematic is looking at outcome. The first study is already from uh, 1929 where uh, uh, this uh, paper in JAMA, uh, and I quote, uh, stated that breastfeeding is associated with better cognitive development compared to formula feeding. And the first meta-analysis came 70 years later. They had 20 studies that met their criteria, um, and only 11 studies that controlled for more than five covariates. And you can see that overall, there was a difference of 5.3 points in cognitive function between breastfed compared with formula-fed children. In another study coming from Denmark, this was published in JAMA 20 years ago, you can see that the duration is important and the longer that you uh, breastfeed, then uh, the higher the IQ uh, of the infant. Um, and you ask yourself, you can see here, there is a, about a seven point difference does it matter or not? Uh, same observation, by the way, in a study coming uh, uh, from the US. Uh, and then again, you can see that at five years, uh, they had higher uh, IQ um, and also low IQ were less frequent with any breastfeeding than those who were not breastfed. And I think not on a personal level, because for one person, two, three, four, even five points may not matter. From a societal perspective, this is important. Coming back to the study from Denmark, you can see that the people who had less than 90 uh, uh, points of IQ, and why 90? Because if you have above 90 uh, points, you can be independent in society. Usually when your uh, IQ is less than 90, uh, you are not independent uh, and that puts a lot of stress on the society. And you can see that although maybe it's not impressive looking at the total IQ score, the advantage, however, it's very important to see that if you are uh, breastfeeding for a longer period of time, you decrease the amount of children who will have low IQ in a level that uh, will make them uh, dependent on other adults. Now, coming back to the IQ issue, there was a study in 2006 that took maternal IQ into consideration and found out that there was only a non-statistical uh, significant difference of 0.6 uh, points between breastfed and non-breastfed infants. Interestingly, taking the same study in 2013, in the WHO publication, uh, with a different statistical analysis, there was a 2.2 uh, difference between uh, those who were uh, breastfed to those formula fed, again, taking maternal IQ into consideration. So again, I don't think that we should base our findings on whether there were two points or no, uh, because what matter is, that we should breastfeed just because it's the optimal way to feed our children. An interesting observation coming from Finland, the cohort that uh, was following children um, uh, until the age of 70 and more. And you can see uh, that if you were fed three to six months uh, uh, with breastfeeding, uh, there was a positive effect on cognitive ability uh, at the age of 70. And if you were fed 
six months or more breastfed, then the effect was even higher. So there was a significant effect between breastfeeding and better cognitive ability in elderly cohort in Finland. And if we summarize, this is from this year, uh, a publication, a systematic meta-analysis of uh, breastfed uh, uh, benefits uh, and childhood intelligence. And you can see that most studies show the modest dose-dependent increase in cognitive scores. It changes uh, uh, at the most, it goes to seven points. At the least, it goes to 0.2 uh, uh, 0.2 uh, points comparing any breastfeeding, predominant or exclusively breastfed infants. But then there is another modality, a very interesting one. Uh, this is a study uh, by Dioni and colleagues. Dioni is an engineer uh, who was able to do MRIs on children, who is able to do MRIs on children, uh, on newborn infants. Um, and he has shown already 10 years ago that there is an increase in white matter development um, and uh, uh, in the microstructure uh, of the brain uh, as long as you are breastfeeding. Um, we, when there is an increased duration of breastfeeding, there is an increased white matter development. And this uh, uh, is connected very well with a publication this year from the proceeding of National Academy of Science showing that there is a component in human milk, the myoinositol, that promotes neuronal connectivity. And this is a link between the white matter and the gray matter, because in this study, you can see uh, that when children uh, when you look at, uh, uh, at MRIs of children um, who were breastfed, you can see here that there is an effect of uh, breastfeeding and breastfeeding duration on larger cortical gray matter uh, in children. Uh, again, suggesting at least a short-term benefit for these children that may be diluted uh, in time uh, with life with all the other factors that get into play. And lastly, and this is a very interesting and important observation, uh, two cohorts from the UK, one from 1958, the other one is from 1970. Um, and you can see, uh, before I, I show the results, I will just explain what it says. Uh, we're talking about social mobility. When we are born, uh, there are the most chances are that we will stay in the same socioeconomic class that we were born in. If you were born to poor parents, uh, low socioeconomic uh, class, then your high chances are to stay uh, in that class. And if you were born uh, to high socioeconomic class, then there are high chances that you will stay there. In the two courts that they have done, they are shown that breastfeeding increased the odds of upward social mobility and also decreased the odds of downward mobility. So there was an effect of breastfeeding uh, on your ability uh, to go up and not go down in social mobility. So I would end with the recommendation of our organization, the European Society for Pediatric Gastroenterology, Hepatology and Nutrition, ESPEGAN, suggesting that exclusive breastfeeding for around six months is a desirable goal, but partial breastfeeding, as well as breastfeeding for shorter periods of time are also valuable. Breastfeeding should be continued by mother and child as long as mutually desired and must be based primarily on considerations other than health outcomes. And I thank you for your attention.